FDA. Much of it's been supported by our, our FDA colleagues. And we will do a demo of an ontology that we're developing, but I first want to give you a little bit of background for where the where the birth of the ontology came from. Um, to get started, I will introduce um, myself. I'll have Dr. Horridge introduce himself. Um, Dr. Auerbach couldn't be with us today, but I believe Tiffany Lee is on the line, and so um, then I'll ask her to introduce herself, and then we'll get underway. So I'm a, a hospital medicine physician practicing. In fact, my last five days were in the hospital, so pardon me if I, if I appear fatigued. Um, but I also do digital health research, um, and in fact, I spent nearly a decade in industry before I came to UCSF um, designing and developing uh, digital health tools that were both patient-facing and provider-facing. Uh, so I bring a very pragmatic approach to, uh, to much of my academic work. Uh, I also have worked with the FDA and CMS on and off for years. And I'm a physician advisor to the Network of Digital Evidence, um, which is a nonprofit, as well as the Digital Therapeutics Alliance, another nonprofit. Matthew, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Matthew Horridge. Um, I work at Stanford in the uh, Center for Biomedical Informatics Research in Mark Musen's group. And I am the lead software engineer for Protege, which um, I assume some of you know. Um, I've done this for a number of years. I'm also working on um, the RADx project as well, um, which is to do with uh, data management uh, for, or our side of it is to do with data management for uh, uh, COVID experiments. Um, I've, now, I've worked in this area for a number of years. So I got my PhD from the University of Manchester. Um, where I conducted research in to do with uh, the logical aspects of the web ontology language at all. Okay. Thank you. And Tiffany? Hi, I'm Tiffany Lee. I'm a project manager at UCSF in the Division of Hospital Medicine. And um, I help Dr. Auerbach manage some research projects, including this one with advice. Thank you. So, um... Let's go into um, some background here to give you an idea of why this ontology, why there was a, a need for developing one. Um, first of all, as you may know, um, the entire universe of digital health, digital medicine, digital therapeutics is, is massive. Um, and this slide actually doesn't even really do it justice, but there are these products and vendors that are clamoring uh, to health systems to be adopted and implemented. And the truth of the matter is that health systems um, are almost on this conveyor belt where there's nonstop influx of digital health vendors calling for their attention, and they fre frequently are not set up uh, for this influx and definitely not set up to try to wisely choose from among digital health tools that can be safely and effectively implemented with their patients. And so in this context uh, of these health systems being overwhelmed, um, the idea behind um, an initiative that was started uh, at UCSF around 2017-18 was born, um, and ADVICE stands for the Accelerated Digital Clinical Ecosystem. And really, what ADVICE is trying to do is kind of lower the friction between these innovators and health systems and to have both parties kind of center themselves or ground themselves in credible re real world evidence. And, you know, real world evidence, as you know, is a little bit different than evidence purely from, let's say, randomized controlled trials. It's, it's the evidence that actually happens out there when you don't have highly selected uh, study populations. Um, and so vendors spend a lot of time trying to figure out where to enter uh, in health systems? Is there a digital front door? And then what happens is they spend a lot of cycle time repeating answers to the exact same questions that they've answered at the last health system that they interacted with. Uh, and so that repetitive um, cycle is not particularly efficient. Many vendors don't even understand what the gauntlet is that each health system um, might have for an intake. And 
there's really not sort of a good way for them to search or be found um, by health systems. On the provider side, uh, there's a lot of diligence that ends up having to be done uh, by health systems to figure out if a given interesting digital health application might be safe or effective to implement for their patient populations. And also they, they really don't have a, a single source to go to to find out let's say they want some digital health application that helps diabetic patients. There isn't sort of a marketplace where they can see all the different tools that are available and in some way kind of compare them head to head. Interestingly, the executives that are, that are tasked with making some of these decisions, frankly, have trouble keeping up with, uh, with the market and they're confused and it makes selecting tools very difficult for them. And interestingly, just to just to make a single health tool decision, um, they have to invest a lot of time uh, and person hours to make a go or no go decision on a given uh, digital health tool. And then even after they've contracted, they are not sure if the tool that they, that they have selected um, is really the best one. And so advice is meant to sort of help solve each of those problems um, and the vision is really to help create this collaborative workspace that can, that can link vendors and health systems, patients, et cetera, uh, really to provide credible evidence and to help decrease the friction to implement some of these tools in a safe and effective way. Advice has sort of three, three pillars of what it's doing, um, and we'll focus in on one of them related to the ontology, but one of these pillars is what we call a digital health common application. For any of you who maybe have had kids or relatives who have, for example, gone to, uh, gone to college or medical school, you can think of there's a common application that is um, that's sort of a first step. They can submit that to one place and then all the colleges or medical schools can look at that and then invite them for a deeper dive. So imagine a digital health common application where the same questions that vendors get asked over and over again by each site is just submitted into this one common application and then any health systems that are interested um, can look at that, and it's it'll save uh, a good bit of uh, a good bit of cycle time. Um, and then also among health systems, even for vendors, sharing best practices around what does integration with the electronic health record look like? What are some of the common security, privacy, or technical needs? Um, and then also uh, this last one, which is kind of the big one, which is these real world performance metrics, setting a framework for essentially apples to apples comparison so that health systems looking to implement these tools have a way to evaluate um, you know, which, which applications uh, have what kinds of outcomes in a uh, kind of in a fair and an apples to apples manner. As you think about these digital health tools, you know, many of them, for example, let's just use diabetes again, that, that operate in the diabetes space, many of them will share a common outcome, which might be um, lowering a hemoglobin A1C by a certain amount, a certain percent over a certain amount of time. And you can imagine the value to a health system if they could compare head to head, here are five diabetes applications, and they all share this common metric to lower hemoglobin A1C by 1% over six months. And this one has maybe the best evidence, and so maybe that's the one that we would want to implement. So to help um, create what I'll refer to as common, common buckets, if you wanted to, to create buckets for these digital health tools that, that share certain um, characteristics, uh, we had worked with the FDA to, to generate this idea for an ontology that creates these common buckets. And we refer to this as the digital variome. And so part of the digital variome was to develop uh, this ontology. And so that, uh, that got underway um, not quite a year ago, and what we're going to show you today is um, some of the work that we've done uh, in the last year in terms of developing this ontology. And so one of the aims of this digital barium was to develop uh, this ontology that was really outcomes focused for digital health applications. And to give you a little bit of context, I mean, why, why do we need to develop an ontology? for this are, are there not other ontologies that already exist? You, you would think, I mean, we would have thought, 
But when we did a, um, a landscape analysis to look for existing ontologies um, that could be used in digital health space uh, or even borrowed from, we found, um, we found it to be very limiting. Um, this is an example of some of them. And I would love in some open discussion towards the end of this meeting, if there's others you're aware of, uh, to be enlightened, enlightened by you. But ones that we came across, for example, um, I'll show you some screenshots. The Comet Initiative um, is a taxonomy. And there are, some there are some aspects of it that could be used for digital medicine applications. Um, but it's sort of, a, it's limited in scope. Um, the World Health uh, Organization also has a classification of digital health ontologies. I'll, I'll show you a screenshot in a second. But it's, it's really a little bit more um, classifying according to, um, to sort of functionalities or work areas and not really outcome focused. Uh, there's a top cop taxonomy, but it's really limited to patient portals. Um, and there's some others that have been reported in the literature, but again, not focused on outcomes. Down at the bottom, though, there are some other um, ontologies that, that can be leveraged in part of this uh, digital health outcomes ontology. And I'll show you how we've, um, we've leveraged some of those to build into what we've, what we've done. So for the, the World Health Organization, just to give you an example, there are certain categories that their classification scheme um, represents. I know this is a little bit small, but you know they, they classify things according to like clients and users um, and, and not as much kind of the outcomes that we'd want to look at or that, for example, a health system might want to look at if they're, if they're trying to make a decision about what they might want to implement. Um, this is one um, also from, uh, from the literature. And um, this is, uh, it has some things that are potentially useful. There's sort of administrative descriptions, um, but not as much kind of like the outcomes, although some administrative descriptions can be outcome related and they can be, um, they can be related to sort of back office efficiency. And there are some digital health tools that, that, um, that focus on those areas. Uh, the Common Initiative has certain categories um, for outcomes, and it's meant to be a little bit more about clinical trials. And there are some concepts here that we can definitely borrow from, um, but where they leave off um, over on the right, you can see uh, they're, not, they're not necessarily granular enough. For example, an eye outcome doesn't tell us, for example, um, diabetic retinopathy, um, uh, rates of diagnosis or speed to diagnosis or things a little bit more granular that you would want to potentially compare between different outcomes. And Comet is limited to about 38, um, sort of 38 outcomes, which is a relatively small uh, collection of outcomes if you think about all the things that are, that are done in the digital health space. So what we started to do was to break down the concept of outcomes into three big, let's call them three big buckets. Um, one is product performance. And so health systems may want to understand what are some of the different kinds of performance of these digital health products that are not clinical outcomes, but they are about the product itself, the technical performance. Those can be things related to cybersecurity, other technical performance things such as availability or uptime, interoperability, issue resolu resolution, things that are really much more purely technical. Um, a second bucket is um, that, we, that we thought was important was user experience and reporting on outcomes related to user experience. Many of us may be familiar with one such as user satisfaction, um, but there are other kinds of user experience that are also related to things such as um, universal design. And then the third bucket, which I would say is probably the biggest and perhaps the hardest, but many of us would think maybe the most relevant is like, what are the real world health outcomes? So there's, there's potential health benefits, um, value to sort of the healthcare system, safety, real world usage, et cetera. Um, and frankly, some of the measures on the right are really just a, a small subset of, of measures that can be that can be implemented in the ontology. Uh, a table is really not big enough to represent all of the kinds of measures for healthcare outcomes, but you'll see when we demo the ontology, uh, some of how we've started to try to capture that. So I'm gonna switch screens here and we will jump into a demo. 
before I do that, let me just pause for a moment and see if there's any uh, questions or points of discussion. Yeah, if you have a question, you can use raise hands. So I, I have a question. What's the difference between the normal outcome comparing digital medicine outcome? Um, there actually, there are some relations there. Hold on a second. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting out of presentation mode here. Um, so normal outcomes, first, certainly from a, like a clinical perspective, many healthcare outcomes are very similar to what you might see in any other healthcare setting or outcome setting. Um, a lot of the differences revolve then also around uh, some of the technical and user experience outcomes that you might not have, let's just say in a, in a healthcare setting. So if, for example, a healthcare outcome in a purely clinical setting, let's go back, back again to a diabetic, um, one healthcare outcome might be you know, the rate of, uh, of peripheral neuropathy or the rate of progression to um, diabetic retinopathy. And those kind of outcomes, if the digital health tool claims to have an impact on those, we do want to capture. But the digital health tools also, you know, may have user experience outcomes, they may have educational benefits, um, they may have back office outcomes, they may have other technical outcomes that sort of the, just the general clinical outcomes don't, don't capture. Does that partially answer your question or make sense? Sure. So Mark and then Mitra, please, uh state your name and your institute because we didn't do an introduction yet. Hi, my name is uh, Mark Walterhaug. I'm in the uh, Center for Bio, um, Biologics Evaluation Research in the Food and Drug Administration. And <clears throat> I'm, I'm sort of naive about ontologies, although I've, <laughs> I've, I've always advocated for them. Uh, I, I just wanted to comment, you know, I, you listed the you know these several ontologies at the beginning, and I sort of see the problem being not that there weren't that many or they weren't comprehensive enough, but there are 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 too many ontologies right now. I mean, there are, there there are many more that you could have listed up there, and 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 I don't know necessarily whether or not they would meet your criteria for being listed in that kind of environment. But um, just like the, um, the multitude of standards that are out there, it strikes me as there's now a multitude of ontologies and how do we resolve this issue? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. I mean, our focus was to find ontologies that were outcomes based and uh, did not come across very many of them. <laughs> so um, that's why in a way we started somewhat from scratch. Um, but again, if, if you folks are aware of any, I, I would certainly, love to know. Um, and then the question is in the, in sort of the, the multitude um, of plenty, uh, how does this ontology potentially get adopted or used? I think that, and I'll, I'll wrap up the slides at the end with explaining the app, the potential application, but how do you put it in front of people who might be beneficiaries? And I, I think the big problem area for many health systems is how to pick um, digital health tools that are safe and effective for their patients. And, uh, and this ontology is really sort of grounded in trying to help them accomplish that. Hi, Mitra, nice to see you. Um, yes, hi, Ben. Uh, so I am Mitra Raka, and I work at CDER, Office of Translational Sciences, and I'm a medical informatician. So I have a question for you. When you did environmental scan of the ontologies, I noticed you have ICD-11 as an ontology. So why not a classification system? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of use the term ontology a little loosely, and maybe with this group, I shouldn't. Um, we actually <laughs> looked at classification systems, taxonomies, and ontologies. Um, but you'll see in the demo how we've um, how we built ICD-11 uh, into, into our ontology. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, just a um, comment Jenna? for Mark. Yeah, yeah Mark. Uh, uh, okay, Thomas. Okay, uh, just to, to uh, sort of build in on what Mark said, I, I think the I think that we have to be aware that you know um, it's difficult. I, I don't think a, a, a particular ontology is is fit to be a standard because every on.
ontology comes with a question or with a problem or with a mindset. And when that when the mindset or the problem or the question is clear, then the then the ontology is meaningful. And and with and we've seen it with with gene ontologies and 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 biochemical pathway ontologies that they are fairly well sort of crystallized. So I think it's a matter of crystallizing the problem and crystallizing the question. Um, and, and then the ontology is going to be useful. Yeah, I agree. So there's no, there's going to be no ontology for like, there's going to be no ontology for everything. Well, well, actually there already is ontology for everything and it's, it's the language, right? It's just not, it, it's just not very useful for certain things. So, yeah. When yeah those, are, those are great points. Um, and, and I think making the value proposition clear, um, so that the problem statement is really that, you know, sort of that vendors and health systems don't know how to, how to find each other um, and assess one another in a credible way. And that's where this notion of trying to create buckets um, that are common buckets that you can categorize digital health tools into so that there's a possibility to compare them head to head is, is sort of a need statement. We also, uh, this is Anna Sharpman, we also need to start to talk about the problems. You know, we, it's not kumbaya that we have an ontology, bravo, bravo, bravo. We need to be able to talk openly about the problems and then try to find solutions. I, I saw with the Pan American Health Organization, they had a country where the blood banking was not working. Then what do you do? You hide it, you know, you need to talk about the problems. You need to be able to, to discuss them and understand exactly what's going on. But we are nice to each other, then we don't do that. Oh no. <laughs> Well, you can be nice and talk about the problems, hopefully, at the same time. Um, in any case, why don't, I, uh, why don't I thank you for the comment. Let me jump into uh, a demo here. All right. So what you're seeing over here on the left, these, these three buckets uh, should be familiar from the slides. We've got these three pillars, healthcare outcomes, product performance that are non-clinical, and then user experience. Um, and so we'll, we'll dive into each of these. Um, let me switch over to Ontograph here. Oh, hold on just a moment. We also need to have feedback loops. Yes. To actually yes. explain exactly what the problem is. Well, you're that comment is music to my ears because on Monday I'm hosting a conference about feedback in clinical diagnosis. So <laughs> without feedback, there is no learning. Uh, so I agree with you. Um, okay, so um, let's talk about here the digital medicine um, application uh, outcomes. And, and here again, these are these three big categories. And so as we um, expand each of these, um, I'm just gonna, what I'll do is I'll show you these two here. They're, they're smaller um, and so they're easier to start with, uh, but um, the big one is gonna be these healthcare outcomes. So, you know, for example, from user experience outcome, we can think about things such as satisfaction, human factors, usability, et cetera. And there are some metrics that we're starting to build in for each of these. Um, and you saw me give some examples around product performance. Uh, outcomes. These can be things like how do these digital health um, digital health vendors, uh, what do they report in terms of like issue resolution? So issue resolution might be time to uh, time to resolving issues. Um, there are things related, for example, to um, interoperability and cybersecurity. So part of cybersecurity could be attestation to SOC 2 or high trust certification, for example, which are typically certifications that ought to be done every two to three years. Um, there are other outcomes such as, you know, tech that are technical outcomes. You can think about system availability or uptime or downtime. And those outcomes might be important from a health system perspective because if certain vendors 
have um, a particularly high amount of downtime, that could become a safety issue um, for those, those vendors. I'm not sure if there was a comment there or maybe just some background noise. Um, okay, so a little bit about user experience and product performance, but the, the big bucket, and this is again, sort of the hardest one is healthcare outcomes. And you can think about how there's, there's many ways actually to think about healthcare outcomes. They're not all purely clinical. Some of them are healthcare economic outcomes, uh, you know, related to cost or cost savings. Um, some can be education related. So you, you can imagine some digital health applications, their outcome is about educating a patient or family members about different disease or healthcare systems. And so they might measure outcomes related to uh, education or even healthcare literacy. There's also things such as healthcare utilization outcomes. So how often is somebody going to the emergency room or how often are they getting admitted? And if a digital health tool can decrease healthcare utilization, then they also may be able to, de to decrease, um, decrease costs. Um, some digital health tools measure um, en engagement uh, as an outcome. Um, engagement uh, is in a way how much the patient engages with uh, the digital health application that's almost like an intermediate biomarker then for what might be a, uh, a, a healthcare benefit uh, itself, which we kind of refer to as a clinical, a clinical care outcome. Um, there can be outcomes related to processes of care. Some of you may be familiar with HEDIS measures, for example. So does an application help providers adhere better to HEDIS or quality measures? Um, there's obviously a lot around patient reported outcomes. Many of you may, may be familiar with PROMIS or ICHOM, which uh, are, have a variety of PROMs. Healthcare operations, I mentioned before, so back office efficiency. Um, and then and this looks like a duplicate of patient reported outcomes. So one of the interesting ones to focus on here, because it's the sort of the bucket that many of us think about with respect to digital health tools are, you know, what are the actual health, the clinical outcomes and you can think about health benefits or safety uh, events. What I'm going to do actually is, is clear this, and I want to frame um, I want to frame the demo now in the context of two um, potential examples. And uh, and the way I'll do that is we'll talk about um, two digital health uh, applications. One that's a, for example, an artificial intelligence application that looks at um, the retina images taken for diabetic patients, and then theoretically helps with um, uh, oops, helps with um, processing those images. So you can think about for such an application, you know, it has some kind of uh, of technology. So it might be an artificial intelligence technology that processes those images. Um, it has some condition or conditions that it operates in, so diabetic retinopathy. And then it has some user, in this case, it may be the physician within a specialty of ophthalmology. And then some of the outcomes that that application may claim is that it increases the speed of diagnosis or perhaps it increases diagnostic accuracy. So the, this is an example. So we can kind of walk through some of these outcomes for uh, for that kind of that kind of application. Let me switch back here to Ontograph. So as we look at uh, the healthcare out outcomes for that kind of that kind of application, we've got some clinical care outcomes that this um, that this uh, operates in. And actually, I want to focus instead on. Uh, I think it was process of care. Oh, sorry, it's healthcare operations, perhaps, that I wanted to actually focus our attention on. Let me try to, I'm going to try to minimize a couple things so we don't have too much confusion here. Um, oh, this is the one that I actually wanted to do for our second example. So let me close this for a second. Well, 
Oh, maybe it was in the clinical, it may have been in the clinical care outcomes. Let me go back here. So here we've got, um, we saw about things such as um, speed to diagnosis and, um, and, incre and, uh, and increased accuracy. So here we can see that this application, you know, may have this modified diagnosis outcome. I'm going to switch back over away from, uh, away from that. And we can see uh, down below, if I minimize some of these things, that if we wanted to get um, very granular to actually talk about what are the actual outcomes that can be measured or reported by digital health vendors, well, if they're increasing, for example, the accuracy of a diabetic retinopathy diagnosis, here are some of the actual metrics that those vendors uh, could potentially report. And you can imagine from a health system, if they could bucket the different applications that operate in the diabetic retinopathy diagnostic space, and then they can compare the sensitivity, specificity, negative positive predictive values, or any of these macro measures head to head against one another, then those health systems can make a more uh, informed uh, choice among the different applications that are sort of common in that way. Um, I do see that there is a, something posted in the chat. I don't, let me see if there's a question here or, or a see if you wanna help. Um. Yeah, if I see a question, I will let you know. Okay. Wait. Okay, so that's that's one example for for example a um, how a, di a diabetic retinopathy application um, might uh, might sort of be bucketed uh, in in an ontology like this. Let's also look at um, a different application. And by the way, these are these are taken from real actual applications that are commercially available products. So we part of what we have done is we've been going and talking to these digital health vendors and understanding what it is they do, what they measure so that we can then, um, we can build out the ontology uh, in that way. So here's one that's a digital health application that actually helps guide patients through episodes of care that are um, operative based. So imagine a patient is going to have uh, some surgical, elective surgical procedure, and the application starts to guide them pre-procedurally, getting ready for the procedure, for example, generating reminders for them to have a preoperative sc screening appointment, or if they are taking a blood thinner, reminding them the day and time to stop the blood thinner before the procedure. And then these applications guide the patients post-recovery. Um, if any of you ever had procedures and left the hospital, you may have gone home with a big stack of papers that give you day-by-day -day instructions of what you're supposed to do. You know, today, today is the day, Alicon, you know, two days from now, you can take off your bandage. Um, three days from now, you can shower. Four days from now, you should do X, Y, Z. Some of these applications, what they do is they will, in real time, remind the patients to do those. And then they will also assess the patient for, um, for adverse events, such as a surgical site infection. Does the patient have symptoms of those things so that the provider can be alerted to those sort of potential adverse outcomes before they land the patient uh, back in a readmission? So for this kind of application, um, we can see that there are different users here. It could be a physician, a physician assistant. It could be then the patient on the other end or a caregiver for the patient on the other end. And there are patient generated health data that can be coming in because the patient may be providing responses to symptom assessments post procedure. This is related to this concept of remote patient monitoring. Some of you may have heard of. And these applications might report on outcomes such as reduced emergency department utilization or um, reduced adverse event rates for specific adverse events or reduced hospital emissions or costs of care. And so as we look at, as we look at these things in this space, let me try to minimize things here again and start from the top. Try to zoom this back out. Here we've got, let's, uh, let's focus then on some of these healthcare outcomes that we were examining. We can see that there, that there could be uh, a variety of outcomes that health systems, for example, might wanna look at. And you can think about some of these healthcare economic outcomes that could be very valuable for cost savings, for example, especially in value-based care. You know, is there, 
is there increased cost effectiveness, like costs per quality adjusted life year? Is there a, you know, a decrease in certain types of total cost? Um, those could be very valuable as, as health systems are looking to adopt some of these tools. Um, healthcare utilization is certainly one of these that, um, that those things, uh, those types of applications can reduce. So reducing a hospital readmission rate, and there are potentially different ways of measuring that. So there could be reduction in hospital readmissions that, um, that are, for example, 30-day all-cause readmission reduction or 90-day all-cause readmission reduction, um, et cetera. So that's a little bit about the healthcare utilization reduction. And I'm trying to close that to clean things up. Um, let me also, this is where we start to then leverage um, some of the other uh, classification or even taxonomies because some of these outcomes we were talking about healthcare outcomes from a benefit perspective, but there's also then the opportunity to leverage uh, not just the benefit, but reduction in, um, in adverse events. So I'm gonna switch over back to the entities uh, over here. And you can see that there are uh, a variety of things that can be used. Um, We've, uh, we've adopted a portion of, I'm trying to look for it here, um, some adverse event outcomes from the ontology of adverse events. And I'm not sure why I don't see it over here, but it's actually a fairly rich um, ontology. Should be able to find it again. Let's see, I'm looking for the safety events. should be in here somewhere. Okay, it's gonna be in the clinical care outcomes. And so within the safety events, you can think about how an application like that might reduce the rate of surgical site infections or might reduce the rate of, for example, um, uh, deep vein thrombosis, which is a blood clot after, um, after uh, not uncommon after certain kinds of surgeries. So this ontology of adverse events, we've sort of pulled in a whole bunch of these adverse events um, that can be seen you know, extensively in this, in this tree over here. Um, similarly to how we've pulled in, for example, just purely for, um, for health conditions, ICD-11 um, here. So uh, with that, what I wanna do is make sure that we've got um, a little bit of time for discussion. So I'm gonna stop sharing the demo. I have a few um, last slides to show you, and then uh, we can hopefully have a few minutes for open discussion. Let me just pull the slides back up. Okay, so what's the, what are the next steps with this ontology? Well, so um, I wanna thank our colleagues at the FDA in believing in us. Um, we were just awarded an extension um, for a year to do more work with the ontology. The ontology is very informed by the real world, what these digital health vendors are developing. And so, so far it's been built off of a relatively small set um, of digital health vendors and us learning about what they do. And we really wanna pressure test it against a much larger, more representative set of the tools that are out there. And that's something that we'll be doing over the next, uh, next year. And we will probably find many more branches and nodes and endpoints that we're not already aware of. And we're partnering with several other organizations that kind of have their fingers on the pulse of the digital health space to help, um, help inform uh, how these, um, how branches and nodes will be created based on existing um, existing uh, digital health tools out in the marketplace. Next, we're also gonna develop a front end. And what that means is sort of a very um, a, a usable interface where users then can, and developers can then answer certain questions to in essence, drop their, their applications um, into common buckets with the ontology kind of functioning on the back end. 
Um, and then ultimately we want to be able to place uh, this digital outcome value set into the public domain so that it, uh, it can then benefit from much, much larger participant uh, development base. The idea really here is for, is for the public good. So with that, I'm gonna turn off the slides and um, I know that Dr. Horridge and I would be happy to entertain uh, discussion.